Anthony Sims Jr. against Roa Mare. Alexis Angulo, 10 rounds at super middleweight. Take a look at the tail of the tape. Sims Jr., 24 years old, a junior to the 35-year-old Angulo. A height and reach advantage for Sims Jr. As we set things up to David Diamante. Now, making his way to the ring, please welcome the reigning and defending WBO Latino Super Middleweight Champion, Romer El Poderoso Angulo. Angulo is from Miami, Florida, so a home fight for him. Although born in Colombia, has been in Miami training since 2010. Has an impressive professional record, 25 and one with 22 knockouts. An impressive knockout ratio as well. I mean, he's fought all over the world. He's a world, world, road warrior. Excuse me. And his only loss is with a super middleweight champion in Zuldo Ramirez. So very impressive resume that Alexis Angulo brings to the ring tonight. And now, making his way to the ring, the challenger, Anthony, the magician, Sims Jr. Well, the magician, Anthony Sims Jr., I know he is a boxing prospect turned borderline contender that you absolutely love, Sergio. I like everything about him. Not only his swag, but his skill, his power, speed, the way he maintains himself, his intelligence, everything he wants to do in and out of the ring is just impressive by this young man. But he backs up what he preaches. He's really, really at the cusp of becoming a top contender. The charisma he oozes, just the way he gallops to the ring. Formerly trained by Emmanuel Stewart, who he said wasn't just his trainer, but his best friend. Ladies and gentlemen, from Miami Beach, Florida, USA, live on DAZN, Sky Sports, and Fight TV, we are set to go with a special super middleweight title attraction. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing USA in association with a and Events and Promotions. Sponsored by JD Sports. This bout is sanctioned under the auspices of the WBO. The president, Francisco Paco Barcarcel, the supervisor, Gustavo Olivieri. Introducing your three judges scoring this title contest from ringside, all from Florida. Richard Green, Gloria Martinez Rizzo and Rocky Young. At the sound of the bell, your third man in the ring from Florida, referee Christopher Young. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 10 rounds of boxing scheduled for the WBO Latino Super Middleweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, the champion. He stands with his head trainer, Pedro Diaz. He wears the white trunks with the red and blue trim. He scaled 167.4 pounds. His professional record, an excellent one. 25 victories, only one defeat. He has 22 big wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Miami Beach, Florida, by way of Bordo, Cauca, Colombia. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning and defending WBO Latino Super Middleweight Champion, Romer El Poderoso Angulo. Angulo. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He is the challenger and he stands with his head trainer, James Doolin. He wears the white trunks with red and blue trim. He scaled the super middleweight limit of 168 pounds, bang on. His professional record, a perfect one. 20 fights, 
20 victories, 18 big wins coming by way of knockout. Originally from Indianapolis, Indiana, and representing Compton, California, introducing Anthony, the magician, Sims Jr. Sims Jr. Okay, gentlemen, listen, everything below here, I'll be considering this low. Everything right here, I'll be considering it low. Listen, your mobile receiving trucks in the dressing room. Okay, it's helping clean the fight. Put my commands of all time. Take yourselves all time. I'll touch them up. Well, Anthony Sims Jr., 20 and 0, 18 knockouts. Alexis Angulo, 25 and 1, with 22 knockouts in his career. Angulo has big power and he likes to start really fast especially with the winging shots around the guard. And he is dangerous early. He is. Oh. Start of round number one. Similarly colored trunks for each. Uh, it's Sims Jr. with the Sims Jr. written across a white belt, a navy belt, in the trunks of Angulo. Sims Jr. also with the tassels around the ankles. Getting the feel of the ring right now. Ring generalship going around. We asked him, and he said that his feet is the first line of defense. And that's how you start opening up an aggressive power puncher like Angulo. You don't go out punch for punch with him. You look for openings, move around the ring, just like that. Exactly what he said he learned from Emmanuel Stewart. And he also recalled one of the foundational pieces of advice for the Sims was something Miguel Cotto told him. He said if you killed the body, the head will die too. So right now he's not giving Angulo time to set or plant his feet because a power puncher always needs for, for a target to stay stationary for the moment because they're, they're not really too uh, nifty with their feet. But if you stand in front of them, they're dangerous. You can see the way Sims Jr. is dancing Yo, around. Yo, Sims Jr. has talked about wanting to bring the combination of smooth, sweet, and dangerous back to boxing. I love that. Okay, he also wants to bring back the, the old school ways of a fighter. He's a big Muhammad Ali fan. He wants to follow in the steps of Muhammad Ali. And maybe that's where he gets the tassels from. You know, he moves around really light on his feet, bouncing, fainting. Really pretty to watch him there. But he's dangerous once he gets some shots off. He's a power puncher, too. He's not all speed and looks. Sims Jr. has also said it was one of his missions to make people aware that you can be a fighter from all different kinds of backgrounds. There's not just one uniform story for the path to greatness in this sport. Yeah, he hates the stereotypes of boxers, especially from, from the inner cities. Uh, he's from Compton, you know, bad reputation in Compton, but this is a young man that has a lot going for him. And he really is nice to watch right now. He made Angulo look really bad missing by stopping while the time and going the opposite direction. Everything he's doing right now is just ring generalship. Frustrate on Google, frustrate the power puncher, getting him into the middle round. Because right now, like I said, before the start of the fight, Angulo is dangerous early in the fight because he has that kind of power. Get back to your corner. Get back to your corner. 
Get back to your corner. Get back to your corner. Bucks. Start of round number two. Anthony Sims Jr. and Alexis Angulo. Sims Jr. with the red gloves, Angulo with the black. I think this represents the biggest challenge Sims Jr. has had yet in his pro career. I believe so. I asked him that question and he disregarded it, but that's just, you know, his, his character, his nature. But on paper, absolutely. Alexis Angulo fought for a world title already. He went the distance with Alberto Ramirez. So, and, and Ramirez is a big puncher as well. Big puncher, tall, southpaw. So he was able to hang with him. And uh, for me, I think this is a big step up for Sims Jr. But it's a step up at the right time. A 20 and 0, perfect time. And Sims Jr. has said, look, I know I'll only lose if I let him beat me. But every single time you step in the ring, you understand you're taking a risk. That's what he told us. And he's a man just like anyone else. Two arms, two feet. It's always a risk when you're in there with a professional fighter. Just like that. Like Angulo just barely missed an uh, overhand, uh, uh, overhand right over a jab of Sim Jr. So it doesn't look like Angulo is looking for anything. But he's looking for counters right now. So Sim Jr. really has to be careful right now. Sharp. Every punch has to be sharp and with speed. How, get lazy. How frustrating could it be for a fighter like Angulo when you know, you're facing an opponent who's dancing away the the way that Sims has so far? Very frustrating. But you know what you're you know what you're gonna get into. I mean, Sims Jr. He's, he's nifty on his feet. He's swift. He's fast. But he also has the power. See, Angulo on the other side, he only has the power. He he can't bounce around on his feet like that. See those feints right there? That's what's frustrating. That's the frustrating part, the feint, because you don't know what's coming. You don't know when the punch is actually coming. You lure your opponent to sleep, and that's when you land with the big power. See, whenever you're dealing with a, a fighter that's moving around the ring like this and, and bouncing on his toes, upper body really nice, the main thing you can do is Jab to the torso, jab to what's not moving, the stomach. That's what Angulo should be doing. Jabbing at the chest, jabbing at the stomach. Instead, it's Sims Jr. has thrown a few jabs. Sims Jr. was an outstanding amateur. Fought in the 2012 Olympic trials at 16, 17 years old, lost to the semis to eventual Olympian Marcus Brown. 10 seconds, women, 10 seconds. Well, two rounds, and Sims Jr. has been able to skate away from Angulo without a whole lot of action thus far. Got the field out yeah. rounds right now. I'm sure he'll pick it up. Yeah. 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 Get back to your corner. 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 Bucks. Start of the third round. Not a lot of activity through the first two as Anthony Sims Jr. has been able to dance away from Alexis Angulo. And Pedro Diaz, an excellent coach in Angulo's corner, says don't let him get into rhythm. But that's hard to do when you're dealing with a fighter whose whole style is on rhythm. Bouncing on his toes, looking for the shots, looking for the opening. Angulo being told to watch the head. Sergio, does the game plan for Sims Jr. shift at all here in round three from what we saw in the first two? Oh, absolutely. And we're seeing it right there. He's starting to get the, the hard jabs in, the speedy hard jabs. 
you know, right now you don't want to you don't want to commit too much with power. You got to do it with speed because Angula does have big punch just like that. He's looking for the counter shots, but if you're moving, if you're on your on your toes like that, it's going to be hard for Angulo to get off on his punches. Sergio mentioned it. Angulo challenged Gilberto Ramirez for the WBO Super Middleweight title in 2018. Came up short, dropping a unanimous decision. But his trainer, Pedro Diaz, has said Angulo has grown a lot since that loss to Ramirez. Right now he's following, Angulo is following, following Sim, Sims Jr. around the ring, and that's what Pedro Diaz in Angulo's corner doesn't want him to do. He doesn't want Sims to, to, to fight into the rhythm of Sims. He wants to pressure him, but that's, that's difficult to do if you can't pin him down. See, those shots aren't going to land. Got to aim for the chest, touch something. Touch the chest, the, the belly, the body shots is what Angulo should be concentrating on right now. Seen Sims Jr. start to throw that jab a little bit more here in the third round. After he has spent the first two rounds almost exclusively on the defensive. Nice snapping jab against the ropes for Sims. Some pop in that jab. Yeah, a lot of speed and technique behind it. Angulo did the right thing right now. He, he landed a jab to the chest. He needs to throw more of those. Double up the jabs to the chest and the, the belly area. Don't aim for the chin right now. You need to stop the target. And by doing that, you got you to gotta stop him in, in the middle. Right now, Sims Jr. is way too elusive. A lot of energy bouncing on his toes. Just like that. See that? Angulo aimed that right hand straight to the chest. Coming up, 20 years old, Alexis Espino will fight six rounds at super middleweight against Vincent Bacchus. Espino certainly a young prospect to watch oh yeah man i really like watching espino fight is i mean he's getting better and better every fight as you should be expecting but a, a vicious body puncher a smart young man speed everything and he has a great trainer in his corner as well so he has everything going for him Sergio, how would you have scored these first three rounds? Well, I mean, you do got to give credit uh, for defense and back ring up, generalship. Back up, back so back I would up, have to up, say right now, Anthony Sims have been doing that. Angulo hasn't been adding effective pressure, and he certainly hasn't been the ring general in there. So I would, I would be uh, favoring Sims Jr. right there. See, that's what Angulo needs to do right there. Break, 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 break. You all right? Okay, all right. Keep the, come on, keep it clean, y'all. All right? Box. You'd see Angulo insisting on touching Sims Jr. early in this fourth round. See, the referee says keep it clean, but if you're Angulo, you're going to want to do the opposite a little bit. You, you have to get gritty. You have to get a little dirty in there because it's going to be hard to pin down Sims Jr. So you got to use your body and be physical with a boxer like Sims. Not necessarily dirty, just you got to get aggressive in there. Just like that. See that? Let Sims complain. Let Angulo get... Get a little bit rough in there. You can't and hold him down and do that, okay? Angulo gets All right. Next time they're gonna look gonna be a point, okay? All right, but my referee Christopher Young. Everything has been defensive from Sims Jr. thus far. As he has bobbed and weaved his way and avoided trouble from Angulo. Angulo finally jabbing to the chest, to the belly. And that's why he's having some success. And he's getting a little, a little uh, 
physical in there. There's a, I mean, he's not he's not applying a lot of effective pressure and landing clean shots, but Angulo is, to me, winning this round just on, on, on sheer aggression. This is the most successful round by Alexis Angulo because he's been jabbing to the belly now. He finally is listening to his trainer, Pedro Diaz, not going for the head, going downstairs like that, and in the clinch, not letting Sims get off. Punching in the brakes. A little bit of everything. This was a good round for Romer Angulo. And here we're going to see the rough tactics, the quote unquote dirty boxing right here. Sims dipping down to his right like that, and the only opening is the back of the head, which is illegal. But you got to rough your opponent up like that. Come on, come on. Especially if you can't get him to get stationary. He's holding on, you keep punching with your free hand. Take his up. No. Go back to your corner, go back to your corner. Go back, go back. Go back, Sam. Box. Start of round number five. Sergio, do you need to see a different level of aggression here soon from Sims Jr.? I think this round, he, finally, he has to get a little bit of respect because in the last round, Angulo was a little bit too successful. He needs to get some respect. Power jabs and land something meaningful in this round. You can't just keep backing up now. Romer, had, Romer Angulo had success in the last round. Do not let him have back-to-back -back successful rounds. without obvious winners in those early rounds of the fight as well. You gotta be careful with how cavalier you get deeper and deeper into the fight. That's true. Some judges just like you know fighters coming forward trying to make a fight or right. something. Like just on the little bit of increased activity that we saw from Angulo in those early rounds. Even though Sims was proficient in his defense. But clearly more activity here to begin the fifth round. Fun night in Miami, Florida. An outstanding evening of boxing. Good kind of check hook right there by Sims. Sims Jr. First and then went to the hook. That's what I want to see now. That's the first real combination that Sims committed to. And it landed nicely. That's what you want to do. You got to get some respect, though. Keep things crisp and, and sharp. I don't know. Google just following Sims around the ring, not cutting off the ring. Yeah, just following him around the ring. Going clockwise, counterclockwise, but he's not cutting in the middle. Sims able to dip away. As Angulo continues to follow. Exactly. And it look, it's a bad look when a, when a boxer follows him around. See, that's what he needs to do right there. And he's getting a little dirty right there by the clinch and, and punching while he's down. The referee's probably going to warn him or take away a point. Hey, 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 hey. One point, but hold him in, okay? 
There you go, Sergio. A point taken away from Angulo for holding Sims Jr., which he had been warned about earlier in the fight. It's frustration. It's frustration on Angulo's part. And in the corner for Angulo, extreme frustration with that point deduction. What do you think, Sergio? Right to, to, do, to deduct the point or no? I would like to have seen another warning. I mean, he has been getting several warnings, but for different things. That was the first time that he gave him a warning for, for, for grabbing and holding and clinching and holding. So one more, one more stern warning would have been good for me, but Christopher Young thought differently. And potentially significant in what has been a close fight thus far. Yeah, according. I mean, depends what you like watching. I mean, uh, neither fighter has landed anything really cleanly and crisply. But Sim Jr. being the ring general with the defense, and you do have to judge that. And Angul coming forward with the pressure. It all depends what the judges like. But. Start of the sixth round. Anthony Sims Jr. and Alexis Angulo. Sergio, we know Sims Jr. has remarkable charisma. And we've seen plenty of knockout power. 18 knockouts is 20 victories to no losses. But when you are a fighter on the rise, how important is it to show a little more excitement and entertainment than what we've seen thus far tonight? Well, as you mentioned, Sid Jr. is a big puncher, but so is Alexis Angulo. So you're dealing with two big power punchers. The difference is Sims Jr. can actually box. He can't just rely on his power. He can move around and win rounds by boxing and not taking chances. Angulo can do that. He's just relying on, on pinning down Sims Jr. and adding something big. It's not aesthetically appealing. I mean, it's not. It's not, it's not uh, what people want to watch. It's very quiet in here. But Sims Jr. needs to find a way to be uh, effective, aggressive, and land the, the right shots without getting in danger with a counter shot, which is what Angulo is really good at, at slinging the, the shots around the guard. Sims Jr. has been able to evade Attempt after attempt from Angulo. The defense has been slick and consistent for Anthony Sims Jr. Angulo just needs to do what he did uh, two rounds ago. Just keep jabbing to the chest, and whenever you get close to the rope, just bang with the body and the arms. I mean, if you're staying active, if it looks like you're trying to push the fight, then the, it just looks like it looks better for the, the, the judges. But if you're just following a boxer around the ring, then you have to give the boxer credit for ring generalship. And sticking to his game plan, his strategy, boxing, not letting his opponent plant his feet. Nice combination there from Sims as he hopped out of cover. Sims flashing the speed. Three punch combination with a right uppercut, left hook, straight right hand, and dancing away. Six rounds in the books here in Miami. Now you're not. Huh? Yes, water. You're not ahead, Anthony. They post the scores. How much? Yep. Yes, you are. How much? Two points. Well? Yeah. 
Two rounds down. Huh? You got to knock him out. That's all there is to it. Hey, you got too much power for him to Seconds deal up. with you. Seconds out. Well, that was a very interesting exchange. Wow, yeah. Between James Doolin and Anthony Sims Jr. James Doolin telling Anthony Sims Jr. you're down two points. After Sims Jr. said, I'm ahead, he said, no, you're not. You're down two rounds. And I believe he said you need a knockout to win? Yeah, I mean, do you feel like that's no. accurate? No. I'm hoping I misheard that or, or I heard something differently. But no, I look. You don't know how the judges are scoring it, but is Sims down and need a knockout to win? I don't think so. Does he need to be more offensive? Not sure, of course. I mean, look, he's boxing nicely, but he needs to get the respect of Angulo. He hasn't done that. He hasn't been able to steal rounds either. In quiet rounds where neither fighter's really doing much, steal the rounds with a quick combination. But does that conversation now change the tactics here of Anthony Sims Jr. Well, listen, no one knows their man better than the trainer, so Sims Jr. just needs to do what the trainer tells him to do. Whatever James Doolin says, you follow. I learned that the hard way. You know, sometimes I felt I was winning fights, and my trainer would be telling me differently, and I was stubborn, never listened, and he was right in the end. So they're seeing something from a different angle that we're not feeling inside the ring. So we'll see if there's an added sense of urgency here for Anthony Sims Jr. Big left hand there from Angulo, which that'll be the counter side of this if Sims Jr. gets more aggressive, leaving himself open for a little more from Angulo. Yeah, that's the danger of telling your man that they need to get more aggressive, you need to uh, uh, win these rounds, you need to knock out to win. All these things make you go chasing for something that you haven't been looking for. You think you're winning, bouncing, looking slick, and all of a sudden you gotta switch it up and get aggressive, and it opens you up for the, the winging shots. That's, an, that's exactly what Angulo does well. He wins the shots really nicely, and he has pop. Sims Jr. able to evade the right hand of Angulo after popping a few jabs. You know, it was an interesting tactic from James Doolin, who actually told Anthony Sims Jr. they posted the scorecard. You're down two rounds. I mean, that's not true. He's just trying to motivate Anthony Sims Jr. He knows his man better than anybody. Sometimes it can backfire, like I said, but when you're dealing with a, a smart fighter, a boxer puncher like Sims Jr., then maybe that's what he needs to hear. There is James Doolin. We'll see what he has to say to Anthony Sims Jr. after round seven. Check. Come on, baby. Got to pick it up. This is eight. This ain't round, man. This is it. Eight, nine, ten. You can, you can beat him. You can pull it out, Anthony. You can do it. Hey, hey, I want to see some double, triple jab, stiff jab like you were training in gym. And then drop a right hand hard fist, a left hook. You hear me? Okay, baby. Don't, don't. Here's what Angulo does really well. He goes around the guard of Sims Jr. And that's what I was expecting earlier, but Sims hasn't really given them a stationary target for Angulo to get off on those winging shots. But he had success right there with that left hook. James Doolin in Sims Jr.'s corner wants more jabs, two, three jabs in order to land that right, right hand and then the, the left hook after that. Start of round number eight. I mean, Sergio, how close do you have this fight through the first seven rounds? Look, I think Sims Jr. is uh, winning, but certainly not winning convincingly. So uh, anytime you have close rounds, of course you got to give it to the guy coming forward trying to push the fight. And there's been several quiet rounds like that where if you're a judge that likes aggression then you're gonna give it to Angulo on the natural the natural fact that he's coming forward trying to push the fight see if Sims jr. can get 
more aggressive with that jab as James Doolin instructed him to. At least with the jab. I mean, sometimes when you're dealing with a, a hard puncher that, that wants to counter your shots, and it's smart not to throw combinations to open, to open yourself up, but a nice fast jab, doubling and tripling it up, throwing to the chest, to the arms, to the stomach, you're not going to get countered uh, uh, really easily doing that. There's a sharp right hand by Sims right there. That's the first clean right hand that I've seen Sims land on Angulo. Yeah, there have not been many clean shots landed for either fighter into the eighth round. Angulo trying to unload there as Sims Jr. was able to break away. There's that jab popping it a couple times. And Angulo stabbing his jab to the gut. If he can double up those shots down there, he can get his feet closer to land the overhand uh, rights and lefts. That's how you break the distance by uh, double and triple jabbing if you're on Gulo. Even if it's to the stomach. As long as you bend your knees, you're not going to be uh, susceptible to any counters. Just like that. Right hand delivered from Sims Jr. Well, that's an aggressive jab right there. Upstairs to the chest and to the stomach. Three solid jabs. Still a fairly low output of activity, even as it has increased a bit in these later rounds. Sims Jr. that time used the jab to set up a combination. That's what I need to see more of Sims right there. He's chopping the body in half, but he's doing it with power now, not just speed. He's doing it with crisp power and still moving away, but now he's throwing combinations. I want to see more of that from Sims. A promising end to the eighth round for Anthony Sims Jr. And maybe a blueprint for what we could see more of in round nine. You gotta put it down once, champ. You hear me? You gotta put some stuff on your right hand. You gotta put him down, baby. That's all there is to it. Hey, you gotta put him down. You gotta take a chance and hit him with some combinations. This is your fight. Start of the ninth round, Anthony Sims Jr. being told again by James Doolin, you got to put him down. We'll see if we do finally get some sort of noticeable increase in the aggression from Sims Jr. Definitely been a careful, very careful, extremely careful performance by Sims Jr. But maybe that was a strategy behind it just to win quiet rounds, but uh, yeah, he's not making a case for himself for a big fight. He says he wanted to fight with B.J. Saunders after this fight. Well, B.J. Saunders was in a similar type fight where he was maybe losing the round and he was able to uh, uh, get the stoppage late. But right now, Sims Jr. hasn't really uh, been landing clean shots to be setting up or softening up Alexis and Google. Type of performance that that, that uh, brings attention for a big fight. And when you're on the rise, sometimes that can matter. I mean, we have seen the powerful knockout ability of Anthony Sims Jr. He has been incredibly careful. 
as he has danced his way through these first eight and a half rounds. Uh, he's been devastating with the power with you know, lower opposition, but you know, Alexis Angulo has only lost his to a world champion. He has big power. So yeah, you have to be careful, but I don't think you have to be this careful. I mean, you still need to you still need to put your combinations together. It's already the ninth round. I mean, I understand why you're careful in the first half of the fight. But say the judges are giving Angulo some of these quiet rounds, you know, you have to make a you make a make a stand for yourself at least. See those chopping right hands on Angulo's landing right there? Those are the clean shots that are easy to see. Sergio mentioned it, the only loss in Angulo's career came to Gilberto Ramirez as they fall for the WBO Super Middleweight title in 2018. Sims Jr. 20-0 in his career as Angulo chops down. Sims Jr. a nice counter. There we go. That's Angulo right there. See, he's just getting a little bit more physical right there. Sims Jr. doesn't want to get physical with the stronger fighter. It looks like Angulo is a little physical, physically stronger than Sims. Nine rounds in the books, and very curious to see where the scorecards will be at because this has been murky. Yeah, I don't know where we're at with the scorecards here. I don't know if the judges are going to like Angulo coming forward looking to fight or if they're going to appreciate uh, the, the ring generalship. I would say the defense of Anthony Sims Jr. and the, the occasional, you know, kind of clean combination as well. You throw that stiff jab. That's Two stiff jabs, throw the right hook, left hook, and then th finish the punches. You hear me? What, we, what we've been working on. What we've been working on. Viene, go away, go away, go away, go away. Vamos, go away. Vamos, viene. Vamos, este con dos. Take it out. Ahora con dos, campeón. Vamos, vamos allá. Two corner, touch him up, touch him up. Tenth and final round of this battle between Anthony Sims Jr. and Alexis Angulo. James Doolin, the trainer for Anthony Sims Jr., has begged him to be more aggressive the second half of this fight, but Sims Jr. has stayed mostly on the defensive. Pedro Diaz and Alexis and Gould's corner is the complete opposite. They like where their man's at. They're, they're cheering the man on, they're patting him on the shoulder, saying, come on, let's finish this fight. So they must feel they're ahead. Or a good chance to, to, to win this fight. Sibs trying to pop that jab a bit. So those are some good shots right there by Sims. Nothing landing cleanly, but you can tell he's putting power behind him now. jab between the mitts of Alexis Angulo. Very unclear as to who would be ahead in this fight. Because as you said, Sergio, it depends on how activity is going to be rewarded compared to defense. Yeah, it's just a, it's a, it's a confusing strategy by Sims Jr. I don't know if this, uh, this has to be a strategy. It's the 10th round, but I didn't, I didn't really see no eagerness in, in trying to impress the judges or the crowd. 
and try to put on a show. Even though his uh, trainer, you know, James Doolin, is insisting that, that he's behind him in the fight, Sim Jr. doesn't seem to be uh, stressing out about that. There's yeah, no there's, eagerness. No, there's been a lack of urgency the entire fight from Anthony Sims Jr., even though he's been defensively proficient. And a very respectful clock. It's 10 rounds in. I haven't heard one boo. No cheers. No cheers. I'm sorry. Well, that'll do it. 10 rounds of incredibly careful boxing from Anthony Sims Jr. And we will see if he will escape with his undefeated record or whether or not the activity of Alexis Angulo would be enough to give him the victory. I mean, look, they're, they're celebrating in Angulo's corner. And in Sims Jr.'s corner, more of a poker face and not really sure where they're at. Now, one thing to keep in mind, a point was deducted earlier in the fight from Alexis Angulo. And how critical might that be in a closely scored bout? It's a great point, Ryan. So say Angulo did manage to win these quiet rounds, and this is a very close fight. That, that point deduction is going to be crucial. I think we are all legitimately curious as to what we're going to hear when these scorecards are revealed. And that is not usually the case for Anthony Sims Jr. No, it is not. And the longer they take tallying up the scorecards, the better it looks for Angulo as well. Well, Angulo and Sims Jr. wait. And we wait to find out whether Anthony Sims Jr. is going to improve to 21-0 or whether he just suffered the first loss of his budding and rising professional career. David Diamante will give us the decision momentarily as Sims Jr. and Alexis Angulo wait. And we can throw it to David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds, we go to the judges' score totals, and they read as follows. Richard Green, 95-94, Sims. Rourke Young, 96-93, Angulo. Gloria Martinez Rizzo, 96-93 for your winner by split decision. And still, WBO Latino Super Middleweight Champion, Romer El Poro Rosso Angulo. Well, Alexis Angulo upsetting Anthony Sims Jr. and handing Anthony Sims Jr. the first loss of his professional career. Sims Jr. quickly vacates the ring. And Angulo celebrates his victory. And, and Sergio, just a, a very confusing strategy tonight from Anthony Sims Jr. Very confusing. I, was, I knew what he was doing the first half of the fight, but the second half of the fight, Sims Jr. actually, I didn't know what he was doing. It was all Angulo. He was starting to have success with the pressure. He got a point taken away with dirty tactics, but sometimes that's what you need to do with a fighter that's moving so much. So goes to show what the judges were scoring here and why Pedro Diaz was so confident in the corner. And the concern in Sims Jr.'s corner, that was validated as well. Let's take a look at the highlights from what was a carefully boxed 10 rounds. Carefully boxed the first half of the fight, disappointing in the second half of the fight. I mean, I just thought this was a strategy, a, a, a careful, smart strategy by Sims Jr., but Starting in the fifth, sixth round, I started noticing that Angulo is winning rounds just by landing shots to the, the, the middle area, the torso, the shoulders coming forward. 
Nothing landing cleanly, but winning the rounds just doing that. There was no cause for concern by Sims Jr. Never really got the respect of Angulo either, even though he was being the matador in there, controlling Angulo at times. The judges didn't give him no credit for that. Instead, they gave Angulo credit for coming forward and trying to make the fight and put the pressure. And that's what happens when you, you think you can win a fight unanimously by boxing around like that.